Yo, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking back in with us. So today I'm gonna to be talking about my Tudor Black Bay 41 millimeter watch. I'm gonna show you some of the wear and tear it's taken. I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts on owning the thing for over one year. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and take a look at this watch after one year of wearing it. So I wanna start off by the most damage that I got on it. You can see right here, I got a big dent right there. And that came from trying to put on some shoes that had metal tips. I swung them around and bop, hit that right there. And then, you know, I was like, ah, oh, I could buff it out. Put some hairline scratches on there. <laughs> so if you scratch your watch up, just leave it alone. If you ever want to send it in for service, let them buff it out for you. Just leave, leave stuff alone. Got uh, scratches on the bezel here. Some hairline scratches on the bezel. Uh, a little bit on the top right there. Slight amounts down here nothing too crazy uh, on the opposite side did I get anything substantial no not really maybe right there and the bracelet bracelet seems pretty good you're gonna have some wear based upon the way the watch is built see right here that's from those links rubbing together Unavoid unavoidable if you're gonna wear the watch and have it right over there and the last thing that you cannot avoid is this that's probably gonna be the most wear you're gonna get on the watch and that's from that little pointy area right there ribbon right there so that's not something you can avoid and something weird I don't understand why I got so many scratches right here they're not deep but they're there kind of mystery this started happening like almost immediately but everything else seems to be not too bad not too bad at all got that wear right there and that is from this part right here touching down on it so overall it's a pretty good watch I would say though, the 316L still that Tudor uses is definitely softer than something that you'd find on a Seiko, for sure. It's definitely a softer metal, but it has more luster, but be careful when wearing the watch. I've been wearing it for a year. It's my most worn watch, but I don't wear it to do nothing stupid like, you know, fix stuff, run my hands through crazy things with sharp objects and metal and stuff like that, like fixing a car or, or building a fence, nothing crazy like that. You just rock this thing when you want to feel flossy, right? So that is pretty much all the damage that I got on the watch. And my feelings about the watch is still happy to have it. It uh, still clocking in around, uh, I would say six seconds to three seconds a day accuracy, depending on how I lay it down. Now, if I lay it down on the crown like this at night, I'm gonna get like around three seconds for sure. Now, if I put it down on the back, we're gonna get more like six seconds. So it depends on how you lay it down at night. Well, for me, I think that's something that you uh, is inherent with all watches, right? Automatics. So definitely a watch that I'm happy to own. I'm going to keep it, going to own it forever. And uh, till I get a Rolex, this is going to be the one. Now I want to speak about uh, the status of the watch. Does it have any status? The only time that somebody even noticed my watch was in uh, Zell's. It was uh, the, the sales clerk. I was taking a look at some other watches, I think it was a Belova, and he noticed the watch on my wrist and he was like, oh man, is that a Rolex? I was like, nah, it's a, it's a Tudor. He's like, oh, but they're made by Rolex, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, actually they are. I was kind of like proud of myself, like, yeah, they noticed. But that was about it. Since then, I've had nobody ever notice my watch, ever. So if you're looking for a stealthy watch that flies underneath the radar, this would be it. If you're looking for something balling that people are like, oh man, look at him. This is not the one. <laughs> All right. So there you go. Not much status to be had with this watch right here. And to be honest with you, I think I have a master plan for how we could get the name of Tudor off and popping. Now, it is my opinion, you know, I'm not gonna say that these watches have no clout and they were never popular beforehand, but in the public mind, the, the, the average Joe, you didn't hear about AP, Patek, Cartier, um, What's the other one? Richard Mill. Until the rappers started icing these things out and flossing them. So if I was an ad executive at Tudor, I would ditch David Beckham and Lady Gaga and be like, hey, let's just give this thing to a rapper iced out for free and let the money roll in. You know what I'm saying? That's what I would do. So until then, this watch is not going to be that much of a status symbol, mainly because of the cost. It's not a very expensive watch and it's just not in the public eye. And, uh, you know, the name Tudor. What is the name Tudor to an American? They have no idea it's even associated with British royalty. Let me tell you that right there. So, uh, Tudor has some work to do. 
as far as uh, getting their name brand out there and creating association with luxury but uh you know for the people that are horological nerds it's a dope watch it's a it's a stealthy watch you buy this watch and you get that build quality and uh that feeling that you would have with a rolex it's i would say arguably 80 to 90 percent the build quality of a rolex that's just what i think maybe you think something different i don't know but anyways so that's the watch after one year super dope watch and uh thanks for checking out the video peace